Okay, so we're going to divide some decimals here, and there's nothing more fun than uh, dividing decimals. I mean, uh, video games are not as fun. Uh, you know, going hiking or watching even the Super Bowl is not as fun as dividing decimals. Now, a lot of you are probably going to say, you know what, I think I'm going to stop watching this video because this guy doesn't sound like he knows what he's talking about. Well, listen, I'm being a little bit funny here and humorous because this is arithmetic and most people, when they're like facing a problem like this or, you know, kind of have this expression, they're like, mm, you know, maybe they know how to do it, but they're like, you know, I definitely don't want to you know, deal with decimals. Who wants to deal with decimals? I get it, you know, uh, but we need to know how to uh, do this stuff, okay? Now, some of you might also be under the false impression that it's like, well, I learned this way back in elementary school or primary school. Um, you know, it's arithmetic. I don't need this anymore um, because I have my trusty cell phone with its calculator. I have my calculator. I have my computer. I have all this wonderful technology. So uh, I don't really need to remember how to do this. Well, you couldn't be uh, more incorrect with that perception, right? You need to be uh, strong in arithmetic. Now, uh, just think about it. If you... Um, you know, one day you lost your cell phone or didn't have your calculator or whatever the case is and you had to uh, uh, do some basic, you know, calculations, you know, maybe you're trying to figure out a money situation or something like that, you still need to know how to do arithmetic. Now, I know it's not a common uh, skill that we practice, but let's try to practice this now. Now, just a quick story before I get into this uh, uh, problem. Way back in a former life, um, I served uh, some time in the military. Now, uh, I was a Navy surface warfare officer. Okay, that meant, you know, I drove uh, Navy ships, and here I'm a little Navy ship here, like so. Now, uh, the, the, the little thing I'm telling you here, it goes to what the main point I'm, I'm talking about. Now, around the year uh, 2000, there was uh, something called Y2K. I don't know if uh, any of you have heard about that. Um, you know, it's kind of in history books right now. But everybody was very concerned that when we went from 1999 to the year uh, 2000, that all the computers were going to uh, blow up and everything was going to go, you know, very, very bad. That was a real legitimate concern. Anyways, my point is this. On, on naval ships, the way we find our position is using something called GPS, right? So uh, just like, you know, on your cell phone, when you go and plug in your Google Maps, we know our actual location, et cetera. Uh, by GPS. Well, uh, at Y2K, that time, there was a big concern that, um, you know, we didn't really know how the satellites and everything else were going to be. This particular time, in, uh, when I was finish, finishing up my uh, naval career, I was actually a navigator, okay, which was awesome. I was able to use my mathematics skills, but uh, I navigated uh, a gigantic Navy warship, okay? <laughs> a lot of responsibility. But um, what I'm uh, getting at is this. Uh, we had to really, really ensure that we had our celestial navigation skills down. So basically, we could find our position by the stars. It wasn't just us. It was all other folks that were, you know, uh, concerned with maritime stuff or whether it be aviation uh, and this is kind of like old school skills. This would be like equivalent to knowing arithmetic when your calculator uh, breaks down. You still had to know the old way of doing things by hand. Okay, so you can't be overly dependent on uh, technology because you just never know when you may not have that lovely technology that we enjoy so much uh, available. Okay, so arithmetic is very, very important and... Um, you still got to know it. So if you're like, eh, I don't know if I remember how to uh, divide decimals. Well, we're going to uh, do this quick problem. And it's, this is just a quick refresher. It's not going to be a complete full lesson on this. So we're going to do this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the, uh, the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses uh, ranging from uh, pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm gonna be launching uh, pre-calculus here shortly. But I also have uh, many, many courses in the area of, a, uh, of uh, test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, now, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, AccuPlacer, ALEX exam, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe a nursing school entrance exam, 
Um, all those exams and many others have a lot of math on them. If you don't do well on the math section, you don't do well on the exam. So let me help you prepare. Just go to my uh, site and check out my full course catalog. If I don't have the test you're looking for, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. Um, I also do a lot with uh, homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, have a great homeschool learning system, definitely want to check that out. And then obviously help those of you that are just struggling in your current math courses. Now, if you are truly serious about uh, wanting to improve and learn mathematics, then you got to be serious about note-taking. Um, over decades of teaching math, this is uh, kind of like my golden rule. When I see students every day working hard, taking excellent notes, they almost always end up with these kind of grades. And then the uh, opposite is true. Those students who are like me, way back in the good old 1980s, uh, what was I doing? I was taking notes, but they had nothing to do with math during math class. I was writing to my friends saying, hey, what are we doing this weekend? And then they would write back and et cetera, et cetera. We were very proud of ourselves, but then we would end up with grades like this. So there's no shortcuts. When you're in math class or any class for that, you got to buckle down and say to yourself, okay, I got to be focusing on note taking. And that's the key word focus. Okay, there is no shortcuts. You can't get out of taking great math notes if you're serious about doing well in mathematics. But uh, you can use my notes as you improve your notes. And my notes include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, let's get to this fun decimal uh, division problem. Now, uh, obviously, I would like you to pause the video and try this on your own without the aid of a calculator or technology. Uh, but you need to know something about basic division. Okay, so uh, if you uh, forget how to do some of the stuff that I'm going to go over, and you might have learned this a little bit different uh, differently, uh, really what I'm most interested in is, is like however you learned arithmetic, um, if you can get the right answer, now, by the way, we can continue to go and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uh, create more, um, make our answer more accurate by adding more digits, but we'll do a few extra digits here and you'll see what I'm talking about in just one second. So let's get right to it and have some fun with dividing decimals. Everyone's favorite topic. All right. So we have uh, 21.47 and we've got 3.2. Uh, 3 we're going to divide it into 21.47. So what is the first thing we do when we're dividing decimals? Well, we have our decimal point here. The first thing uh, is that we got to uh, deal with this and we got to move that decimal point over like so, so it becomes a whole number. That is the first step you do, okay? So this 3.2, we got to move the decimal point over one sp uh, spot so it becomes a whole number. Now, because I moved it over one, these decimal points are kind of connected at the hip, if you will. They're kind of, you got to move them in tandem. So it's like, okay, I move this over one. Well, I got to move this guy over one as well. So our problem becomes uh, 32. Okay, this is now a 32, and this is 214.7. All right, now we're going to basically uh, use the same division algorithm, the same steps as if we were doing this problem, 32 divided by uh, 2,147. Uh, 2, so here, there's no decimals here. Oh, obviously, there's a decimal right here. There's a point zero, but you got to be able to do a problem like this, okay? If you can't do this problem, then you're not going to be able to do this, do this problem, but the steps that we take to um, the algorithm that we take uh, to do this division problem <clears throat> is what we're going to be doing here. So uh, when we're dividing decimals, it's really no different than doing this problem. All we're doing is moving the decimal point over. Now, what does that mean? Okay, when we move the decimal point over, uh, when I did that, okay, I'm kind of ready to start doing my uh, division algorithm. Here is my decimal point. So my in my final answer, my decimal point is going to reside right there after that four and, be, uh, and before that seven. So that's why I kind of have a kind of very prominent right here. Okay. So this is the setup. Uh, we don't have to guess where the decimal point is going to be. It's going to be right there. So let's go ahead and start. Okay. With basic division. So what does that look like? Well, 32. I'm saying, okay, 32. I got to divide it into, can 32 divide into 21? No, they can't. Uh, but 32 could definitely go into 214. So then this is where you mentally you have to start going like this. You have to say 32 uh, can it go into it one. Well, obviously, uh, definitely can go into it twice because that's 64. And then you just keep going up and up and up. You start testing numbers just like, you know, 
you learn back in elementary primary school and you figure out, ooh, I can get uh, six 32s into 214, right? And you do this by kind of trial and error. So you got 32, can go into 214 six times, all right? So 32 times six is 192, all right? So again, this is division that hopefully you've already learned. So we're gonna say, okay, 32 goes into 214 six times. So we go six times 32 is, that's 192. So we're gonna subtract that 192 from that 214 and I end up with 22, okay? So this is kind of the first uh, part of this problem now after we move the decimal points. And so now we, we ask ourselves, can 32 go into 22? And the answer is no. So what do we do, okay? Well, what we do is the following. All right, let me go ahead and continue the problem here. All right, so 32 could not have gone into 22, but we got this lovely seven over here. So we're gonna drop it down. All right, this is what we do in division. And now we're gonna put it behind this 22. This becomes 227. So 32 definitely can go into 227. And we do the same thing in our brain. We know, okay, 32 times one, definitely times two. That can go into it and you kind of keep going. And you say, oh, I can go up to seven. So 32 times seven is 224. So 32 goes into 227 seven times, all right? So seven times 32, that's 224. And uh, when we uh, subtract, we end up with three. Now this, this uh, steps that I'm doing here, this is what we call the division algorithm. Um, as I stated uh, before we did this problem, you gotta know how to do basic division, okay? So um, hopefully, um, you know, if you don't remember that, then this is obviously going to be more confusing. All right, so here we are effectively kind of done, all right? So uh, uh, 214.7 divided by uh, 32, all right? Or the equivalent um, decimal um, answer here, or a decimal version of the problem, which is 21.47 divided by 3.2, okay? What we have so far is 6.7. Now, some of you might saying, well, okay, I know 32 can't go into three, so we can stop. So this is a decent estimate, but let's say we wanted to keep going and get a more precise answer. How can we do that? Well, this is what we're gonna do. So we're like, okay, we know that 32, let's back up here real quick. So we know that 32 can't go into three, okay? So we're kind of stuck. And then here, seven was our last digit, but we're like, well, it would be nice if we could drop a digit down. Well, we could always drop a zero down, okay? So that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, so we're gonna write a zero here. I'm gonna drop it down right here. Now I'm gonna say, okay, can 32 now go into this number? Uh, 30, no, it cannot. So at this point, we put a zero, right? That's important, okay? This is part of our answer now. So 32 cannot go into zero. Uh, I mean, 30, 32 can't go into 30, so we put a zero um, as our answer. So we're like, okay, well, how can we continue to get an even more precise answer? Well, you guessed it. We could even put another zero down here, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to drop another zero down. So finally, we got 32. Couldn't go into 30, but it definitely goes into 300. So 32 goes into 309 times, okay? So 32 times nine is 288. So we'll put our 288 right there, all right? 32 times nine, you can see the work right there. And I gotta put the nine above that zero right there, okay? So nine times 32 is 288, and I subtract and I get 12. Now obviously 32, this 32 can't go into that 12, and we could just continue on the process, et cetera, et cetera, just refining our decimal answer. Okay, do we get, you know, we can just increase its accuracy, but this is a basic uh, example of dividing decimals. And, um, you know, if you forgot this, don't worry about it. You know, most people have forgot this, but it's like riding a bike. You know, it's one of these things that maybe you haven't done in 20, 30, 40 years, uh, but you're like, you know, if, after doing a few problems like this, you'll remember how good it felt to be in elementary school when you used to get a lot of happy faces and stars and the teacher would just like, you know, shower you with all kinds of rewards. And you're, Little Billy, you're so great at math. Here, here's a couple extra bonus stars. And you were just so proud. And then um, 
something happened when you went to uh, high school, right? For the most of us, we were like, yeah, I don't like school or, yeah, I'm speaking for myself, you know, I'm too cool for math. <laughs> Anyways, listen, uh, elementary school, uh, hopefully most of us have some uh, good memories there. But if you remember how to do this, that's pretty impressive, okay? Now, of course, if you are recently out of school, then that's like one thing. But if you're like, you know, my age in the, in the 50s, if you went to school, you know, um, you know, in the 60s, uh, who knows, maybe in the 50s, depending on uh, your age watching those videos, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, that's pretty impressive, okay? Anyways, the bottom line, the main thing is this. Arithmetic is absolutely critically important, and you should practice it uh, a little bit from time to time. No one's going to make you do this, especially if you're, like, taking an algebra course or whatnot. But, you know, hopefully this little video was a nice little review. Now, um, if, in fact, this was a nice review and you actually enjoyed it, uh, please consider smashing that like button. That actually helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is to try to t uh, make math clear and understandable, okay? Nobody should be failing math. If you're doing your part, if you're serious about learning math, okay, you gotta do, you gotta put the work in, all right? If you're taking notes, paying attention, talking to your teacher, you know, that's where you, you um, that's the, the foundation. But if you're, you know, you're having a tough time beyond that, then there's so many free resources that we didn't have way back in the good old days. And if you like my teaching style, then please like, you know, watch my videos. That's what they're there for. But uh, my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.